Hi guys! Welcome to another exciting edition of Thirsty Thursday. It is Danielle from bestproducts.com. Uh, today we are super excited to have Chris Adams here from Coney Island Brewing. Chris, thank you so much for swinging by. Well, thank you for having me. It's uh, a little, little trip from Coney Island to Newtown. So yeah, just a little jaunt over. Yep. Sweet. Um, we couldn't be more excited to have you. You're going to tell us a little bit about um, some delicious summer beers, a little history of the yeah. brewery, and a couple more treats after that, I hope. Yeah, we'll, awesome. get, we'll get to some beer tasting soon. Cool. Um, yeah, so uh, about a year ago, actually August 6th, 2015, we opened up our uh, brewery down in Coney Island. So we're located, located on Surf Avenue, built into the front of MCU Park, uh, which we'll get to a little bit later, which is an inspiration. Uh, for one of our beers that we'll taste today. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, and you know we're small. We're small business. We've got twelve people that work uh, down in Coney Island. Uh, two brewers and ten front of house people, including myself. Um, our head brewer Eric and his assistant Alex are the ones that created all of these unbelievable styles that we'll try in front of us today. Oh wow, pretty uh, small staff. You guys yeah. run a tight ship down yeah, there. Yeah, you know what? It's um. It's cool. We like to keep it small and we like to stay innovative and yep. get really, really creative with the products that we offer. Awesome. Yeah. Speaking so, of products, yeah, what I mean, on tap? yeah. Without further ado, let's go <laughs> to uh, let's go to our flagship stop. So, Mermaid Pilsner is a traditional style Pilsner, uh, Czech Pilsner. It's got a really nice hop aroma. We throw in a bunch of West Coast style hops, mm -hmm. so you're gonna get that citrusy. Um, resiny aroma that you really look for in uh, that people are really excited about in IPAs and hoppier style beers. Mm -hmm. um, so this one has a little twist to it, but I'm going to pour it out for you first and okay. see if you can pick up on it. Okay. So do you know the four style, four ingredients of beer? Ooh. Ooh, hops. Yep. Malt. Nailed it. Yep. What's that Creativity. Little? Ah, definitely. That's the fifth. <laughs> Uh, and a slight buzz. Yeah, well, <laughs> two for four. Well, that's that's the reason you drink these beers. Um, <laughs> it's, it's yeah, yeah. Um, but Not involved in the brewing. There you go. Thank you. So wow, this nice. is Mermaid Pilsner. Okay. Um, nice color. The other ingredients in beer are, of course, water. Okay. Um, so we use New York City water. Duh. And yeah, the best water there is. Water. Uh, and then also yeast. So right. yeast will eat those sugars from the malt and create the alcohol Got it. Um, that we all want so bad in our beers. So. Smells great. Yeah. So lots of citrus coming off the top there. Yeah, those are those West Coast style hops that we use. Um, but with this one, we've got a little bit of a twist to a traditional Czech, because uh, you know we're Coney Island, so we keep things up just a little bit. You gotta be a little unconventional. Right? Absolutely. Mm. So when you when you sip that, what do you tell me? What you're tasting? Definitely some crisp citrus, mm -hmm. like a little lemon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So lemon that, zest that comes from the hop, but um, the little twist that we put on on this beer is we actually throw in a heavy hand of rye malt. In it. Oh, okay. So that rye is going to be like, like picture your pumpernickel, um, you know, and rye breads, where it's going to be a little bit more spicier. Yeah. Um, so that's going to give you just a little different twist on what a traditional pilsner would be. Got it. So that's cheers, yummy. by the way. Cheers. It's well, summer. And Thirsty Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. <laughs> and speaking of cheers, people are wondering where they can get the glasses and the growler. Oh, absolutely. Um, the, grass, the glasses and the growler are both available down at our brewery on Surf Avenue. So we're built into the MCU Park, like I said, and we're open seven days a week. So Monday through Friday, we're open noon till 9 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday, we're open sometimes just a little bit later. We'll never close before 8 p.m. But if the crowds die down a little early, people are a little too burnt from the sun. You know, we might. You're a little fair like myself. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, we've got both of them available uh, at the brewery, and then you can buy the glasses on our website as well. Awesome. These are awesome. Cool. Yeah, you've got the gold rim one. That's a little special. Cool. Yeah. Um, Fancy. This is our actually our newest edition of our pint glass as well. I like those. Mm. It's like a good little home, <laughs> home bar must have. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, and they're really affordable. We charge oh. five bucks for them. Totally. So, cool. also this so, um, comes in a can, which is yeah. pretty ideal for summer beer yeah. drinking. Yeah. Going so, to the beach. You know, with the the way the craft beer is taken off, it's turned into people want their beer and they want good beer in any way that they can possibly get it. Yeah. And they want to be able to take it with them wherever they can go. Yeah. So with us located obviously right on a beach and right in front of a baseball stadium, 
um, and you know boaters all around, golfers nearby. Yeah. Um, we decided that you know if people want mermaid pilsner and they can't bring glass there, like we gotta fix this. Yeah. So we <laughs> and we didn't just fix it with the twelve ounce normal can. We actually also went with the big boys, the wow. sixteen ounce one piner. Wow. Uh, so those four packs are available um, all around. So our mermaid pilsner is actually. Um, our second most widely distributed beer. So this is actually available in New York all the way down to Virginia, and now we actually just launched uh, Connecticut and Rhode Island. So this is our flagship, it's our number one seller. Uh, it's the number one craft pilsner in New York. So it's uh, it's a really fun, really easy drinking beer, as you can tell. You Absolutely, know, it goes down some, nice. Some, my colleagues <laughs> like three sip beers. One to just be like, cheers, sip, and then right. two, and it's gone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> really refreshing. It's a fun lunch break. And someone's wondering why, or where is the name Mermaid? From. That's a great question. Um, so if you've never been to Coney Island, uh, Coney Island has this kind of old mystique about it, um, where you know mermaids were once told or once said to wash up on the shores there, uh, right in front of the amusement parks, in front of the roller coasters. Um, but there's actually a street called Mermaid Avenue, uh, one yeah. avenue away from the brewery. So it's um, it's an homage to the neighborhood. It's an homage to the street. You know the folklore of the past. And also the Mermaid Parade, which actually just passed. We had a uh, float in it. Oh! It was unbelievable. We had a little sea monster we rode through the streets of Coney. Sounds, sounds magical. Yeah, it was really, really cool. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. awesome. So yeah, most of our products you'll see are in homage to Coney Island and the history or the neighborhood or New York City. Totally. Cool. Awesome. So and I'm also there's sort of like a resurgence in Coney Island right now, right? Like a oh, lot yeah. of things are being rebuilt. Oh, yeah. Can you talk a bit about like how it's kind of becoming more of a destination for people, especially Absolutely. during the summer. Absolutely, yeah, Coney Island's been burnt down, for those who don't know, Coney Island's been burnt down three different times. It's been rebuilt three times. Wow. Um, it's got a lot of history to it. The amusement parks are, you know, better than ever right now. Yep. The boardwalk is shiny. Yep. The beach is clean. There's Minus new the sharks rides. that one time. Oh yeah, there was sharks <laughs> there the other day. Sharks. No big deal, they were just thirsty. They're just chilling. Uh, <laughs> they, they wanted to stop by the brewery. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's better than ever right now, and it's still, um, still coming up. So if you come down and see us within, you know, two hours, you can watch a baseball game, ride a roller coaster, eat hot dogs at Nathan's, yes. go to the amphitheater and watch a new show. Yes. Uh, Slightly Stupid is there this weekend. Oh, wow. Cool. <laughs> um, and you can tour your favorite brewery. And we do tours and tastings every two hours. We have eight rotating taps. They're guaranteed to be different every time you walk through the door. Oh, wow. Um, so it's a really cool neighborhood, and I, I, uh, I definitely recommend coming to check us out. Cheers on that. Cheers. <laughs> I would just go back to this for sure. Um, okay, so we did the mermaid pills there. Right. Get this in a can, which is, yeah. by the way, like the classiest, almost tall boy can I've seen in a while. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. pretty cool. So you can get that in a traditional bottle. You can get a can. What's what's next? This is yeah. something this is summer, right? Yeah. So okay. this is our seasonal. Okay. So this is home plate pale ale. So home plate pale ale, like I said. Uh, a lot of stuff we name after our neighborhood. Yeah. Um, so we're built into the front of the MC MCU ballpark, which is the home to the Brooklyn Cyclones, right. minor league team for the uh, New York Mets. Gotcha. Um, and you know, it's it's a That's very light, easy drinking American pale ale. Um, awesome. <laughs> you have that clothes down pat. <laughs> My Vanna White. Yeah. Vanna so badass. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we, we paid a little bit of homage to with the Sword Swallower, with the baseball bat. Yeah. Um, you know, Coney USA, oh. the, last long, the last and longest running free show in the United States is just down the street from us. Uh, super, super, super cool spot to hit when you're in town. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then, you know, you got to have the tattooed Brooklyn looking people there and the ball players. So, so. Brooklyn. So, Brooklyn. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so this is just a really easy drink in American Pale Ale. Cheers. Cheers again. Uh, this is going to have that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is going to have that West Coast style hop aroma as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that beer. Uh, so this is available as well in six packs and um, at the brewery on draft. So that is another good. reason to come down to serve. <laughs> That's another easy sipper. Is it? Are these ABVs comparable? Like they're is they're one similar. a little bit heavier. Than um, the mermaid is just a little bit heavier than the home plate pill. Got it. This is nice and smooth though. This is really tasty. Yeah. Also, refreshing. our head brewer Eric Hernandez did an unbelievable job with this. We were testing it. We went through multiple different styles of hops that we were going to use. Mm -hmm. uh, we switched up, you know, a little bit of uh, the, the malt additions we used, and now we just found 
this is a beautiful style. Yeah. Easy drinking, summer. Totally. Ale. And it leaves you like wanting to have another sip too because it's just like slightly bitter at the mm -hmm. end. Like not maybe as much yeah. citrus as was over here. I'm not a beer expert, obviously, but like you're doing definitely great. want to go back and have another sip. <laughs> <laughs> and, but yeah, what you'll notice is all these beers are exceptionally easy drinking yeah. and pair very well very well with food. Okay. So if you're barbecuing, you know, Mermaid Pilsner is excellent. Yeah. And you know, the, the citrus aroma is great with seafood too. So if you wanna, you know, cook some mussels or, you know, throw some on top of a, a salmon. Um, so you would do, you would do beer well. with seafood. Oh my god. Because yeah. some people are like Deep tea fry toddlers. Too. Oh yeah, well duh. Deep fry. Duh. But like some people are like, oh no, if you're gonna do seafood you should do a wine, like a white wine or rose or something. But you well, you're you're yeah. a proponent of beer with seafood. Oh my, yeah. yeah. So the funny Excellent. thing about... We'll get know, along fine. <laughs> yeah, beer pairing versus wine pairing with foods. Not to, no offense to any winemakers or people that love wine. Sure. Um, but wine has one ingredient. And that ingredient changes. Um, just based upon where the, the grapes were grown, the yep. terroir. Yep. Um, beer has multiple ingredients. So mm -hmm. we already talked about there's four in yep. every single beer. According to Reinheitsgebot, which is the German purity law. Um, however, we have all kinds of different styles of beer that have different, you know, additions, like the rye we talked about. Yep. All the different West Coast style hops. Yeah. When we get into our sodas, we'll get to a little bit more of um, exotic ingredients as well. Okay. So, cool. Cool. Cheers to that. They're Cheers both delicious. I can't. It's like so few choice. I can't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you don't have to. You can, you can, but you not that want. intense. And someone's <laughs> wondering because they're loving the like art on all of your mm -hmm. like cans and products does that come like do you think of that or i don't know if you know do you think of that after you make the flavor or do you get the flavor you're like this is a perfect picture and then yeah. you pair it like how yeah that's a that's a really good question too um it i believe it comes pretty much right as we're going through it so it takes a while to create a beer and a perfected beer enough that we'd be willing to put it in a bottle and put it in front of you um so while we're doing it it's a big creative process so like i said before our head brewer eric hernandez is really working hard on those ingredients and what's going to make that beer taste, you know, the best it could possibly taste. Yeah. And I'm kind of the guy that does on the other side, um, with, you know, a team, a bunch of team members uh, to create this fun stuff. And, you know, what makes sense for the brand, what makes sense for New York and Brooklyn and Coney Island in particular. So, cool. yeah. Sorry, guys, I'm thirsty today. Yeah. <laughs> thirsty. <laughs> All right. So. So it's three sets. Yeah. Come on. It's going to be gone yeah. soon. <laughs> um, cool. So, yeah, you want to move on to kind of what put us on the national map? Yes, All absolutely. Right. Guide right. us. All right. So, next up is our hard root beer. Ooh. Who Brian just commented is his favorite. He loves it. Thank so. you, Brian. Yeah, go, Brian. You're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, our hard root beer. Okay. Awesome. All right. I'm Hello. not going to say anything. I want you to oh, take no. a big whiff and a sip and okay. tell me what you're thinking slash smelling and tasting. Okay. Cheers. Upon first whiff, it smells like root beer. We did it. We did good. Maybe licorice, anise, mm -hmm. Nailed fennel. It. Nailed it. Root beer again? Yes! <laughs> it's got the root beer in it. Um, no, so yeah, this, uh, this is a really, really cool style of beer. Um, that we put a lot of time and effort into developing. Vanilla so this, and birch is what I meant. Yeah, vanilla, vanilla birch, birch, and yeah. birch. So we, <laughs> we did a lot of research on what type of vanilla and what type of birch we oh, needed cool. to make it taste the most like uh, you know a real root beer. Cool. Um, so we actually settled on Madagascar vanilla, which is a really rare um, style of vanilla, and mm -hmm. it just gives it that real vanilla pop, and uh, it doesn't get really syrupy at all. Okay. So we use cane sugar in this as well. If people are wondering how it's so sweet, um, there you go. Oh, that is so delicious. It's killer, right? Mmm. Yeah, it's dangerous. It's so. really, it's kind of like drier than, it yeah. like definitely makes me want another sip. I don't know mm -hmm. what about it. It's just like not, maybe it's just the lack of that syrupiness, but uh, it's yeah. like super refreshing. Yeah, so I mean, when we were creating this, we were like, all right, we want it to have some pop. We definitely don't want people to confuse it with you know what they drank as a child right uh, we want this to be the adult version um, so don't get it confused it does have 5.8 percent alcohol in it um, so it, it will get you a little wobbly after a few which is great um, but the ingredients we used in it were <clears throat> are super 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 um, natural and you know uh, fresh ingredients so it's 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 very nice and you can really taste the difference totally throw it over ice Throw a scoop of vanilla ice cream in it. Oh yeah, it's just like maybe a spirit or two if you're getting a little crazy. Getting a little crazy. All yeah. the above, yeah. Um, yes, yeah. it's so good. Mm. Yeah, super. 
super, super good. Definitely not the root beer we all know and had as as children. Yeah, I think it's a way more grown up version. Yeah, when I was a little kid, I used to always drink the A and W root beers and be like, I yeah. hope this is what beer tastes like. Oh, oh. and <laughs> we kind of did that. <laughs> Your childhood dreams, yeah. Childhood yeah. dreams going for a little Chris, yeah. In front of you all here today. That is yummy. And then if you go to the brewery, is this is this on tap? It is. Yeah. yeah. So we've got the hard root beer and our hard orange cream on tap okay. at the brewery. Awesome. Uh, and they're the only places you can get it. So you can take growler fills of it to go. Got it. Um, so all the more reason to go box. visit the brewery. Definitely pay a visit. Absolutely. Get yeah. A we've list. got. I mean, we've got a beer garden out in front too. Um, very good size. You can fit about 150 people outside. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah, it's such a cool place to be when the sun's out. You can sip on some root beers. Yep. Our one year anniversary is coming up. Quick plug. <laughs> August 6th. And uh, we're going to have our good friends Rita's uh, from across the street, ice cream and custard. Ooh, They're going to wow. wheel a cart over and we're going to make root beer floats. Yes. Because August 6th just happens to be National Root Beer Float Day as well. I know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Stars Say have no a line. Oh, right. Right. The brewery Absolutely. and National Root Beer Day all happened at once. Say no more. I'm in. <laughs> It's and, so good. Yeah, Rosina good. watching says that the hard root beer and the orange cream ale is the only beer she drinks now because she oh, loves it so Rosina. much. Rosina. <laughs> Too sweet. Thank you, Rosina. Pay a trip to Chris at the brewery. I feel like he might, like, definitely might, a hug. Might tempt you to try a couple of other ones. Hugger. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> a big hugger. Yeah, we'll, awesome. uh, we'll, we'll show you what's next. Cool. Cool. All right, all so right. root beer. Yeah. And what? We got root the beer's orange. killer. Yeah, root beer's this killer. This is my current favorite i okay. think it might be the changing of the seasons but i am all about our, our hard orange cream oh yeah this is like one of my favorite childhood treats orange creamsicle mm -hmm. was it the flintstones was there a flintstones creamsicle erroneous doesn't matter Maybe. but it was, it was one of my favorite treats <laughs> used to hear that i think i think it was ice push cream pop one. And be like, yeah, oh, oh yeah push pop. oh i would be the kid running after the ice cream drop for sure right. yeah cool so right in my alley this is oh, there you go yeah this is um one of our new Sodas. Okay, cheers. Um, this so this down. has got a nice um, combination of orange, vanilla. Uh, it really does knock it out of the park as far as matching that, that ice cream that we all know and love. So, cheers Yum. to that. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Every time. Every time. Not too sweet. <laughs> yeah. Not too sweet. No, I could drink a dozen of them. Not that I would, but... God, that's good. A few. A few at a time. Uh, yeah. So what are you thinking? That's amazing. I mean, it's it's definitely reminiscent of, like, childhood popsicle treats. Yeah. But without the sweetness. Mm -hmm. And yeah. with, with a, a slightly higher ABV. So or an ABV. Yeah. Speaking with. <laughs> In general, good? yeah. Get you going. I'm into it. For sure. It's really, really yummy. I can smell... Again, like it's it smells like actual citrus, not the artificial yeah. stuff that you get in like the, the popsicles when you were when you were a kid. Yeah. So I mean, these are just a few of the styles we've made. Uh, yeah. We've made twenty seven unique styles down at the brewery since we've been wow. uh, in business. Yeah. So we keep our brewers locked in the brewery. They don't get out. <laughs> uh, they don't get off. And, but it's all for your pleasure, viewers. Um, so we always have something new, something new and entertaining. We made a cotton candy Kolsch. We made a couple of different really fun styles that really play to the neighborhood. Cotton so, candy Kolsch. That sounds cool. Yeah, we that have, we have no intention of slowing down either. So. Wow, I definitely gotta pay a visit to this brewery. And someone's sure. wondering, do you remember, like, cause you've made a lot, do you know what the first one you made was? Like, yeah, was the first one? and okay. it's still my favorite to this day. It might just be a little heartfelt, <laughs> but um, the first beer we made was a New York Honey Stout. Mm. So this was an 8% really malty, um, juiced up stout that had um, 50 pounds of New York honey in it. So we talked to this upstate bee farmer, uh, we called them, they were only really selling, uh, it's called Better Bee Farms in Greenwich, New York. They were only really selling the honey to their friends and family because they made so little of it. But when we tried their honey, we knew that that was the honey we needed for this honey stout. So we bought their entire um, <laughs> their entire lot of honey oh, wow. and they like shipped us 50 pounds of honey and we dumped it right in and this beer, I can't even tell you. I still think about it all the time. It's <laughs> so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think about tier. like a Guinness with just a little bit more ABV, yeah. um, but with a nice 
honey aroma and a, like a really calming sweetness. Yeah. Shirley wants a taste. She just Come on down, <laughs> Shirley. There's a chance that will uh, show back up. Ooh. So it's currently not served, but it it's might have not. a comeback? No, yeah, yeah. So right now... And I mean, people go and beg for it, maybe. Yeah, we've got, we've got a list of beers that we're on uh, pace to make, and some will repeat because they were some of our favorites. Yeah. Um, and, you know, because people like Shirley who, you know, want to taste it, or people that... Um, have had it in the past, so like, when is that coming back? So, we gotta make people happy. And I feel like Coney Island is like the land of nostalgia. Like, if you're already making a trip out there, why not go and revisit yes. a beer that you still love? So, exactly. hopefully, that comes back, makes a comeback. Absolutely. That'd be awesome. Cool. So, again, for people who are just, uh, if you're just tuning in now, these you can get these beers and hard sodas. Mm -hmm. Pretty, they're pretty widely available, especially on the yeah. East Coast, right? Yeah, the East Coast. So the beers are available um, New York, down in Virginia, in um, most most markets. Okay. And we just launched Connecticut and Rhode Island, which we're super stoked about. Uh, but the hard sodas are available nationwide. So that was our first national release. It kind of gave us a little bit of press as to, you know, wow, these guys from Coney Island are making some funky stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, we're looking forward to further expansion. But for right now, we're really happy with where we're at. Yep. And kind of create new stuff and take the craft trend, you know, to new levels. For sure. So if you guys are in New York, definitely make a visit to the brewery. Yeah. Um, this home plate pale ale is really something cool, and it's only out this summer. Yep. Um, yeah, and also the growler, the glasses, you can get all of that at the brewery as well, right? Yo, oh, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's all available down there. Awesome. Um, right now, we've got all of these beers on draft at the brewery, so you can't get that anywhere else. And what about the towel? The towel you can buy down there as well. Um, I believe we may be getting that for sale on our website, okay. but as of right now, it's just available at the brewery. Awesome. I love that mermaid. Yeah. She rocks. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> cool. She kind of rocks. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming. Chris. Oh my god, thank you. It. Cheers. Happy summer. Blast. Yeah. Happy Thirsty Thursday, everyone. <laughs> yes. Cheers. See you guys soon. Cheers. Cheers.